Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a mid-session update for uh, Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. It's 12.27 p.m. as I'm starting the video, and uh, a couple things. We'll keep this one short, especially after t uh, yesterday's mega video on the uh, all those breadth indicators. So well, this one, I'm going to look at just three time frames on the market, uh, and I'll do it pretty briefly, 60-minute uh, charts daily and the weekly charts, and I'll also make a point to cover uh, the S&P 500 up in the last couple updates I've only looked at the uh, queues um, and then uh, something to watch this week the economic calendar we have a very heavy economic calendar this week including but not limited to the big FOMC meeting uh, so that one's uh, has a potential to be a market mover for sure more so than some of the recent meetings uh, with inflation just uh, continuing to uh, make Powell eat crow on his uh, um, transitory uh, inflation comments he's been making for over a year now. So he's starting to finally backpedal. So we'll see what happens there. All right, let's dive into the charts. Daily chart, QQQ. We are back at that key level right there. Remember, we had an all-time high uh, back in late August, early September right there. We had a breakout of that all-time high right here. And then we came and back tested it right here recently. That's when we hit T2 on the uh, uh, QQQ short trade. And uh, that's where we bounce. So you had this uh, kind of nutshell, if you're catching up on things, you had two trend lines. This first trend line here gave us sell signal number one uh, right there. Let me uh, grab the right tool here. Sell signal one, then we had sell signal two. Numerous back tests of that level. So the 401 is still big resistance in my book that ideally uh, should contain any uh, bounce back uh, rallies in, in, in QQQ, and it most certainly has uh, recently. You can see all those. Uh, now we're back down. So we've been bouncing between that level, and we're back testing the uh, three, roughly 382.80. Again, that's the level that held here. When T2 was hit on the 60 minute time frame, we bounced back up and we're back there again. And we also um, took out that gap today, as I mentioned earlier in the update today. We had a big old fat gap right here. Uh, yesterday, we closed just inside that gap and then the futures continue to sell off overnight and we opened up there. And so that gave us a little bounce trade this morning. Again, we'll see that on the 60 minute chart. So uh, bottom line, the takeaway is on the daily time frame. Uh, at this point in time, we are at pretty significant support, and that's why I posted uh, two, you know, active trader setups today for you know to cover your shorts and play a quick bounce trade. The one at the open, and right here now, I think we'll get a little uh, drift up today. And uh, again, if you're not an active trader, if you're trying to swing trade and you're holding out for some longer term targets, which I do think have a pretty decent chance of being hit, especially so far with what's happened, uh, well, today, really, that changes things. You know, we're up here kind of pushing the upper limits of the bounce a few days ago, as I mentioned, but boom, we're back down there. So that, let me loop us over to the weekly chart. And this is what I'm talking about here. So we had on the weekly time frames both SPY and QQQ put in bearish engulfing candles. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had red confirming candle the following week on both. But then uh, last week, we bounced back up and we certainly didn't violate or take out the, the bearish engulfing candle. We'd have to move above it, but it's not ideal. So I gave you, a, you know, I said you know, we had a check mark the following week confirming, you know, red candle. But then the uh, last week, that gave us somewhat of a question mark uh, because we closed back up towards the top of that candle. Now we're down here. However, the week is young. It's, you know, it's only Wednesday midday, and a lot can, and I promise you, will happen between now and 4 p.m. on Friday, especially after the FOMC meeting tomorrow. Uh, so uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So that's where we're at on a weekly time frame. And again, TBT, to be determined. We'll see how this weekly candle closes. Ideally, for the bearish scenario, we want to see it red. And as I like to say, the redder the better. Uh, if you're a bull, you want to see them hold, you know, these recent lows. You want to see them rally. Again, from a bullish perspective, and I have to acknowledge all scenarios, you know, this is another back test. If you're longer term bullish on the market, even if intermediate term, you're just looking for another uh, thrust up to new highs and then another correction. Even if you're looking for that, and it's maybe a five you know, 10% bounce or whatever, I can tell you it's objective to go long here. That's uh, not what I'm doing, but I think uh, you can certainly make a case for that. Uh, keep in mind, you'll probably, whether you're long or short, if you use tight stops this week, especially after tomorrow, you're probably going to get your stops run in the in the volatility, the post, what I call post FOMC noise, you know, when the announcement comes out at two o'clock. And remember, it's not the initial 
announcement. They're going to go through them. Powell comes out, does his dog and pony show, you know, in the press conference. And, uh, and then both humans and more importantly, the algos will parse that data looking for keywords. You know, is he becoming more hawkish? How hawkish? Well, what's he saying? And, and the market's going to usually, you see a lot of back and forth volatility. And so the takeaway is, you know, don't read too much into the initial reaction. It's usually uh, quite often not the one that sticks. In other words, if we rip up or we rip down after the announcement. Uh, the dust usually settles the following day or later that afternoon. Okay, so that's it from a technical perspective. Longer term targets still remain and I still think there's a good chance we come down at least hit this uptrend line, that 373.14, that's my next target. Uh, and then uh, the 200 day moving average is down here at 360. So at this point in time, 360, let's just keep it pretty simple. It's a round number. The 200 days are coming in just below that. Uh, that is a, uh, at this point in time, we're at a likely swing target if you want to hold out for some more. And from where we're at now, roughly, uh, we're looking at another 7% drop. And um, and I think it has the potential to happen fast. I also think, based on the weekly charts, there's the potential for an even deeper drop. But let's just first things first and see how, see how things go after tomorrow. Uh, so that's your weekly chart. Same thing on SPY. Weekly bearish engulfing, confirming candle. Green candle, but red again today, and kind of flirting with this long term uptrend line right there on SPY. Uh, what I did want to show you, let's get to the 60 minute charts. You know, the SP 500 also on the 60 minute time frame put in a divergent high. And just like QQQ, we had dual sell signals recently. You had first this uptrend line here, that was sell signal number one. And then we broke the secondary trend line there. And then we took out 465.50, which was. Uh, Support. We rallied down, uh, went down, I'm sorry, bounced up, but we're back down. And see, it's all about these gaps. So here's why I think uh, you can make a case for another bounce trade today. Uh, SPY is backfilling the gap right there. I mean, technically speaking, the gap is where we closed the previous day right there. That's that candle. But you have these two candles here, and that's what I like to use as uh, support. Um, and so there it is. S SPY, the S&P 500 ETF is at support. And QQQ on the 60 minute time frame, we're back down to, we tagged that T1 again today. And uh, here it is. So you can see on the 60 minute chart of the Qs, there it was yesterday. You can see we, before the close, we dropped into and closed in the gap right there. And then the futures continued to go down overnight. And this is where we opened. So when you go in, you know, zoom in real tight, uh, this is that bounce trade. I posted we opened up on the gap or close enough to it this morning. So you were able to game a quick, you know, eight tenths, almost 1% bounce in the queues. Hit my minimum target almost to the button uh, and preferred target, by the way. Uh, make clear on that, not just minimum, but also the preferred target. And then you were able to reverse and get another 1.5%. And so for active traders, and you can do it again, I think, right here, get a little lift into the close. But again, I'm not looking for much. And uh, right now is not a good time to get married to any one position. So again, active traders, there's some opportunities in the market today for sure. And that's what happens when volatility starts to spike, which it has. Uh, let me get to NQ. So here it is, NQ. Uh, there's key levels. I had to, since the first chart I put out this morning, I had to replicate this chart. I had to change over to the um, continuous contract. I did have the March contract before, but then I have to, on this program, I have to move all my lines and it won't let me, they snap in about one point increments. I can't, I can't zero in. So anyways, I just wanted to bring that up that uh, it's the same, same levels as close as I could replicate them. And and uh, that was it. So there's bigger picture, you know, coming off that big divergent high right there, negative divergence, sell signal one, sell signal two, big level right there uh, at about 16,423. We'll call it 16,424. That's what NQ, the NASDAQ 100 futures should remain below. We've had multiple rejections there since. And then uh, again, you can see all these levels were well, the queues are trading. There's that little bounce this morning. Uh, or no, was it this one here? Yeah, it was that one there. And again, that was that. Yeah, we're looking at a 60 minute chart. I showed it to you on the uh, QQQ. So a little bounce. And actually, that bounce that we were able to game was also a bear flag. And you can see then we had another thrust down. And again, we're at my next support level. We've certainly been consolidating, but I'll tell you, the buyers aren't coming in pretty aggressively. At least not yet. Uh, so anything can go. 
But from my experience, usually right up leading to when you get down to the final hours and, you know, the day of and maybe the previous day before an FOMC meeting, the market usually goes into a holding period. But, you know, well, I have to say this. These aren't normal times. I think a lot of people, especially bulls and longs, are probably worried about uh, how hawkish, you know, Powell is going to have to go. I mean, again, he's been eating crow. He's been dead wrong on his, you know, uh, outlook for inflation, the entire Fed and everybody for a while. And, and, and it's just not abating. What is it? Something where we're at like I think 37 year highs on inflation uh, figures, the latest ones that just came in. Uh, so that's, you know, that has to be taken serious. And there's really no signs of it abating yet. So the Fed uh, is going to have to backpedal and they've already been. Uh, and uh, the dot plot is changing probably pretty rapidly and could even change faster tomorrow. The dot plot is the uh, perceived or expected trajectory of interest rates uh, going forward. Um, we already know he's you know, pulling back on the bond purchases, but now it's more, I think the market's going to turn to focus on how, how soon are they going to raise rates ahead of uh, previous, uh, the previously planned schedule. There, so there it is, 16, roughly 15,773 support right there, uh, just like I showed you support on the SPY. And then uh, my next stop is down here at 15, uh, 536, 50-ish. We'll call it 15, 536. You know, these are, it's a 15,000 point index. So don't worry about the fractional points. And then I gave you earlier uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've given you uh, several times my if things get ugly target, which we'll look at right here. So this is a, I just jumped out to a, a two hour candlestick chart. So we go back a little longer, six months in time. These are the same trend lines uh, with the same sell signal one, sell signal two, and uh, the divergent high. And you can see this battle right here. This this was a battleground between bulls and bears. You know, we moved down below it a couple times briefly, but a lot of trades have occurred in here. And so far bears won, they were able to and again, guys, I speak metaphorically I'm talking about supply and demand forces, not, you know, shorts or bears on the market. It's it's you know, you could have a lot of long term bulls and longs that just tired and they they're taking money out of their uh, stocks, whether it's individual investors, institutions, because they're concerned um, that, uh, you know, the Fed's going to start pulling away the punch bowl. And uh, that's it. So we took out 16, 117-ish uh, right there today. Boom, pretty impulsive move down. And I gave you some micro levels on the uh, intraday charts, which we're at right now. But uh, next stop on this time frame I have is about 15, 543. And then again, my if things get ugly target all the way down here at about 14, 425. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, again, just a possibility. And, you know, if these support levels break, things things can move fast. You know, I just want to throw that out there. Maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe we go on, make a new high. Maybe the Fed comes in and, and they, they continue to be, you know, uh, stubbornly dovish. And um, we go up and make a marginal new high. And if that's the case, well, you know where I think, you know, it makes sense to start stopping out or at least not adding any more, adding to any more short positions. Um, and bulls can, you know, can buy any of these pullbacks to support you want or buy a breakout above uh, 16, you know, four, five, round up a little and allow for anything other than just a brief whipsaw through there. All right. So enough on that. I think I covered that ad nauseum. Let's see. The I already gave you ES. I believe I did. Uh, if I didn't, here's ES hourly chart. Um, we put in that big divergent high here. We had a sell signal right here. There was a bearish rising wedge breakdown, little snapback rally. We came in to put roughly an equal high right there. So at this point, pretty much a double top high. And uh, of course, we got what I like to see on that last thrust up negative divergence, nice, clean, negative divergence. So this is simple stuff. Divergent high, correction. Divergent low, here's your positive divergence, rally. Divergent high, and this is why I love the 60 minute time frame for swing trading. You just swing these divergent highs and lows, uh, and then tactically or strategically add on on breaks of uh, below support. For example, 46.53 was good support. We broke it, sharp move down, and now we overshot 46.13, but I did show you there's some support there roughly on SPY. Uh, but here's where we're coming down, I believe, at least at minimum. If you're looking, if you're an uh, ES trader and you're looking for a downside target, maybe somewhere to cover shorts or go long, that's about another 1.5% down to this trend line right here. Again, on the 60-minute chart, 
these uh these lows are back in late September early October down here and then we have another reaction point clean reaction right there and so that would be you know potential downside target if the market doesn't like what uh Fed has to say tomorrow okay and on that by the way I mentioned okay so I mentioned the heavy economic calendar well when you're in the site just click on resources right here if you're not familiar there's uh, the economic calendar under tools of the trade click on that and it'll bring up load the economic calendar for the week uh, and again like I said it's a heavy heavy week PPI anything in red with a red dot or market moving potential market moving report retail sales tomorrow and then um, you know that's petroleum FOMC announcement that's the big one that's the biggest potential market mover and again you know the Fed's going to give their uh, press conference at 2.30 uh, housing starts and permits jobless claims for Philly Fed manufacturing index industrial production etc cetera, etc cetera. so pretty pretty heavy uh, economic calendar this week and uh, that's why uh, I think we should expect some volatility and um, again charts have been building divergences severe uh, uh, market de severe deterioration in market internals and things like that lead me to believe that any surprises other than the initial any knee-jerk initial reactions here uh, that any surprises are likely to be to the downside all right like I said I'd keep it brief so we'll wrap it up here and remember you know I've laid these targets have been here for for weeks now since all the way back here uh, laid out these targets and I still think they're a good chance they'll be hit but also go off you know use everything collectively look at the S&P 500 look at trend lines and price support levels there um, the Nasdaq 100 look at the both the QQQ and NQ look at 60 minute and daily time frames um, and uh, cause, so what will happen is sometimes you'll see us heading down and maybe we're between T3 and T4 but you hit big support on uh, let's say NQ or the S&P 500 at that very time and that's where the buyers might step in so that's why I like to cover multiple time frames and at least you can't cover every index there's a ton of different indexes out there but when trading the large caps uh, these are the two I usually focus on QQQ and uh, the S&P 500 so that's that and final note we already hit my first and second target so it wouldn't surprise me if we get little if any reactions here and go on down through there because we already had a reaction off T2 so uh, it could be a pretty swift ride down if we're going to hit T3 and T4 and again chances are we're not going to hit there tomorrow before uh, 2 p.m. Uh, because the markets again tend to go into a holding pattern right in front of the Fed but hey this time is different. Every market is different and uh, we've certainly seen things in the financial markets over the last couple of years since COVID hit. I mean, you know, 2008 was a game changer. Fed did things they never did. And then when COVID hit, it's just like I said, I have no other word other than outright nuclear option is, is what they threw at this market. And uh, they certainly juiced it. So uh, like I said, when that juice comes out of the market, uh, patient might not be so happy so let's just see what they do and let's see more importantly forget about what the Fed says what does the market do because price by far supersedes any fundamentals any rhetoric uh, we'll look at price action and let the charts continue to be our guide all right I'm gonna wrap it up here this is Randy Finney with right side of the chart have a great day